Hello and welcome everyone to evening prayer. <clears throat> My name is Anke Thea Dijkman and I'm an elder in the Protestant Church of Hellevoet Sluis, the Netherlands. Tonight I'm standing in for the Reverend Jenny Mills. She is always here on Friday, but tonight she has a night out. Bless her, I hope she has a whale of a time. Oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it is in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. This past week we had a national holiday. On the eve of the 4th of May we remembered all the victims of World War II and the victims of war since. That evening the whole country in the Netherlands keeps two minutes silence at 8 o'clock in the evening. And there are very solemn ceremonies in Amsterdam and many other places in the country, including many generations. On the 5th of May, we celebrate Liberation Day. We celebrate freedom. And in church, on the Sunday closest to Liberation Day, we sing one of the hymns from our hymn book, which is also our national anthem. It has 15 verses, and some of them are a bit patriotic and a bit royalist, but there are also verses of faith. We always sing verse 1 and 6, and I shall read you the sixth verse which I've tried to translate. My shield and reliance are you, O God, my Lord. It is you on whom I want to rely, never leave me again. Grant that I may bravely remain your servant always, and that I may defeat the tyranny which pierces my heart.
The first reading is Deuteronomy 31 verse 30 up to 32 verse 14 in which Moses speaks. Then Moses recited the words of this song to the very end in the hearing of the whole assembly of Israel. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. Let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop like the rain, my speech condense like the dew, like gentle rain on grass, like showers on new growth. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God, without deceit, just and upright is he. Yet his degenerate children have dealt falsely with him, a perverse and crooked generation. Do you thus repay the Lord, O foolish and senseless people? Is not he your father who created you, who made you and established you? Remember the days of old, consider the years long past. Ask your father and he will inform you. Your elders and they will tell you when the most high apportioned, when the most high apportioned the nations, when he divided humankind, he fixed boundaries of the peoples, according to the number of the gods. The Lord's own portion was his people, Jacob his allotted share. He sustained him in a desert land, in a howling wilderness waste. He shielded him, cared for him, guarded him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, as it spreads its wings, takes them up and bears them aloft on its pinions. The Lord alone guided him. No foreign god was with him. He set him atop the heights of the land and fed him with the produce of the land. He nursed him with honey from the crags, with oil from flinty rock, curds from the herd and milk from the flock, with fat of lambs and rams. Bashan bulls and goats, together with the choicest wheat, you drank fine wine from the blood of grapes. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The second reading I've chosen um, to read Romans 14, verse 13 to 23. Let us therefore no longer pass judgments on one another, but resolve instead never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of another. I know and I am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it is unclean. If your brother or sister is being injured by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. Do not let what you eat cause the ruin of one for whom Christ died. So do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The one who thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and has human approval. Let us then pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Do not, for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean. But it is wrong for you to make others fall by what you eat. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that makes your brother or sister stumble. The faith that you have, have as your own conviction before God. Blessed are those who have no reason to condemn themselves because of what they approve, but those who have doubts are condemned if they eat, because they do not act from faith, but for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. So then, what shall we talk about? What else but freedom? In our age, in our day and age, we have freedoms, so many. Freedom to vote, freedom to go where we want to go, 
freedom to decide to have children or not, to have a career or not, freedom of religion or not. Yet when we read Romans, we see that our freedoms can curtail the freedom of the other. In the past year, we have experienced lack of freedom or that we should curtail our own freedoms for the safety of others and that we may expect that others act responsibly to safeguard our freedom. This evening, I would like to ask you, perhaps sometime over the weekend, to contemplate and reflect on freedom, what it means to you. I don't want to fill it in for you because it's different for everyone. I am just happy to celebrate freedom with you. That freedom of enjoying the riches that our society gives us. Those riches that are also spoken about in Deuteronomy that we just read. The riches of being with other people, learning from other cultures, the freedom to nurture our own beliefs and traditions. The riches of food, education, arts, crafts and music. Enjoying the closeness of family and the most beautiful nature. Just like in the times of Moses and just like today. In your beautiful country and in mine. Today a well-known Dutch poet, theologian by the name of Hans Bauma, turned 80 years today. And he posted this poem, which I translated for you. Whatever happened, whatever didn't happen, there is light every day. That light of kindness every single day. The secret of bread, love from the earth. Whatever happened, whatever didn't happen, Every day is a day to be human, undeniably human. Let it be so. Our New Testament song is from 1 Peter um, 2, and I'll read it to you. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin. No guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted in God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of our souls. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Gracious God and Father, come and dispel the darkness from our hearts, that in the radiance of your brightness we may know you, the one unfading light, glorious in all eternity. Amen. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in our crucified Redeemer, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And in thanksgiving. We pray, blessed are you, sovereign God, shepherd of your pilgrim people, their pillar of cloud by day, their pillar of fire by night. Stir up in us, stir up in us the fire of your love, which shone forth from your Son enthroned on the cross, that we may be cleansed of all our sins, healed of all, of all our infirmities, and be made ready to come into your presence, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And in the love of God, let us complete our evening sacrifice of praise. And prayer. In the cycle of prayer for sinners, we pray tonight 
for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Nottinghamshire. We pray to the Lord. We also pray for peace and harmony in Northern Ireland. We pray for all facing the challenge of COVID-19, key workers, NHS and care home staff, teachers and school staff, and those administering the vaccinations. We pray for aid and relief for India, South Africa and Brazil in the battle against COVID-19. And we also pray for anyone facing difficult decisions and facing health worries and mental health worries. And we pray with Celia for her grandson Elfie and the family. Today's update is that Elfie has finished round three of immunotherapy treatment. He is in good spirits and his mum took him to school today for a short visit. We are hoping Alfie will be good enough for a trip to the seaside later this month. He's looking forward to that. And the family says a huge thank you for your continued support and prayers. It really lifts their spirits and gives them hope. We pray with Liz for 12-year-old great-nephew Ryan as he prepares for his third round of chemotherapy in two weeks' time. We pray with Prince for Cheryl in Johannesburg for Cheryl's medical review, staying with the children, thankful they are for thoughts and prayerful accompaniment. We pray with Tom Schumann for his cousin David. We pray with Judith for Catherine, her niece, as she seeks to come term to terms with a breast cancer diagnosis and awaits a plan for treatment. We pray for the reverence Amanda Linney for her continued recovery from her operation. And you have been praying for me and I would like to thank you for that. Um, I'm on the road to recovery but it is a nasty autoimmune disease and the medication is hefty and there's still some months to come. We also pray with Roger for Pauline and for Louise as she continues to reflect on an important meeting. We pray for the Reverend Michael and June Pevy, and for the Reverend Graham Mascari and Vera following her fall. There was a tough last week last week, chemo number two, but this week is a chemo-free week and uh, Vera is progress progressing nice and steady. They thank us and you for your prayers and the prayers of many across the Synod. We also pray for the Reverend Eric and Joan Allen. And in our prayers we keep all others known to us who struggle with their health, keep them safe, we pray to the Lord. And for all who sleep in Christ, that Christ will remember them in his heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. We praise you, Lord our God, for your presence as we pass through the shades of the night to wake to a new day. We praise you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and we thank you that we may ask all this in freedom. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. And may the Lord bless us with his grace, and fill us with his peace. Amen. And now I have a surprise because I don't know what music we are going to hear.